All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our fifth virtual seminar in Housing 2.0. Today's seminar is going to outline seven tried and true principles for changing behavior. Now these strategies can be applied to optimize customer value for high performance buildings. Now you might think, well, I'm a builder or an architect. This sounds more like sales. Well, sales are likely a part of your company's efforts. And if not, then maybe you're one of the people attending today who might be considering a career change, which would be appropriate because it is Explore Your Career Options Week. Now, my name is Mike Kalignant, and I'm the Housing 2.0 Program Manager. If at any point you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me via the chat box or by email. I'm going to put my email address in the chat box in just a little while. You know who has built a career in housing? Sam Rashkin. He's formerly the chief architect at DOE's Building Technologies Office, but now is focused on creating and teaching the content for the Housing 2.0 program. That content is, is based largely on Sam's latest book, Housing 2.0, A Disruption Survival Guide. Now, the full program was established to help empower you, our building professionals, to design and construct higher performance, healthier, more sustainable homes at a fraction of the cost. Sam's going to lead us through today's seminar, and he's also going to address your questions at the end. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you about our sponsors who provide careers for many people. The first is Schneider Electric, who is driving the digital transformation of modern homes with smart and sustainable energy solutions for ultimate comfort and energy efficiency. Their connected home ecosystem of smart energy management solutions provides digital control of energy use throughout a home, from the grid by their smart electrical panel to their connected wiring devices. Next, we have Jinko Solar. They are a leading PV module manufacturer and energy storage system integrator. The company has deployed approximately 110 gigawatts of their Eagle modules in 160 countries globally, including more than 17 gigawatts right here in the United States. Eagle Storage brings together the best energy storage technology for turnkey hardware and energy storage services. And finally, Panasonic Healthy Indoor Living Solutions is helping builders across the country differentiate themselves with powerful, code compliant, and cost effective indoor air quality solutions that provide a safer environment for home buyers. Now, during the course of today's presentation, you can submit questions for Sam. Simply use that questions box that you see inside the GoToWebinar control panel. I'm going to review those questions and pose those to Sam after his presentation. All right, now to hear from a guy who has spent his career in the home building industry. Here is Sam Rashkin. Hey, welcome everyone. And today is one of my favorite topics, translating the hidden value of zero. And the reason it's such a favorite topic is because after visiting tens of thousands worth of homes under construction in high performance programs, one of the biggest opportunities uh, in the industry is to do much better at translating value. So I hope today's session is useful. Uh, what we're going to do and cover today is first the context again of housing 2.0, why, what, and how. Then we'll go into what is the hidden value of zero uh, as a baseline for opportunity. And then how do we translate that value? And oh, as always, we wrap up with discussion. So that's the layout for today. And before we begin, I like to just uh, always lead with the why. Uh, translating value really matters. Uh, and this kind of old, ancient sales axiom says it all. Once value is understood, price becomes much less important. And it's a critical to always get value understood. So this is such an important session. I'm glad you're here. And let's dive into the why, what, and how context from Housing 2.0. And it all begins with this basic analysis of where people spend time done by one of the national labs. And it found when people report back where how many hours they spend every day at home, work, dining, other indoor locations, vehicle, and outdoors, this is the big, big uh, aha moment for everybody. We're almost 70% of our lives inside our homes. Home is where life happens. And this is pre our COVID, way pre-COVID, I suspect after COVID, we're closer to 75%. And that leads to the why for Housing 2.0. The core purpose, the reason we exist is for homes where life happens better. And what we do is create a framework, a consistent bankable process for delivering homes where life happens better. Now, most of my audiences are zero, high performance, uh, housing community professionals, 
and they're very focused on performance, and that's great. But there's no way this stool will stand for just performance. So housing user experience optimization requires, in fact, five complete strategies for homes that live better. And it's community design, sales quality, as well as performance. And entailed in all this is about 160 best practices. And we've been uh, basically vetting this for uh, many, many years, uh, hundreds and hundreds of housing professionals. And we're excited that this is a consistent process for getting a better user experience <clears throat> at lower cost. So how do we get it at lower cost? And this is basically the process that gets us to this consistent outcome. We have a first cost business model and a housing 2.0 business model. And when we look at the cost per home, we may spend a certain amount for user experience optimization, mostly around experts and special features to do that in a first cost business model. But in housing 2.0, we look to make a significant investment in the experts and special features when we know we have a user experience that's transformative. It could be color, it could be lighting, it could be outdoor living, it could be healthy living. There are a whole array of experiences that are worth investing in. But the secret sauce to this whole program is number two. Normally you have a certain array of costs for material, labor, and marketing in a first cost business model. We apply this optimization lens. We look to just optimize simple, lean, no waste, quality integrated systems and mass customization for a net cost savings with all this added value, which winds up to be about 30 to 70% savings plus added value per home. Again, the housing 2.0 reference is where you'll find all this information, detailed tabulations. This is the backbone to the content that we're gonna cover today as it has been in the past uh, webinars uh, this year. So let's start with a hidden value of zero, which is a summary of a lot of what we cover in hundreds of pages in Housing 2.0. And the basic strategy for how we get to zero for lower costs is optimizing three key elements. One is design, the second is performance, and the third is productivity. And it's not enough just to do performance. So starting with design, our strategy in Housing 2.0 is to recognize our core purpose with homes is space and space matters outside, inside, and the details. And what we do, what we, what we optimize, the goals are to optimize location, strategies fit to site. We optimize nature, we do that with natural comfort. We optimize space, we do that with right sizing. We optimize form with simple, and finally optimize function with integrated systems. And what happens when you do all these and apply these best practices is we wind up with all this value, all this added hidden value. We optimize affordable with free natural comfort, leveraging the sun and the wind. We optimize the space itself. We right-size it for how you live. It's simple, which is it delivers amazing cost savings and elegant aesthetics. We are fit to site to enhance durability, and we have all these integrated systems to optimize both aesthetics and cost. And Eventually, we're moving the industry to mass customization because it's so much lower cost and it delivers like 90 plus percent of, of what we expect in terms of customized solutions. On wellness, we have way more than just indoor air quality. With good design, we have outdoor living, we have daylight and enhanced views. We have this uh, really extraordinary comfort that's leveraging the sun, the wind, and fresh air. We have clutter-free living and social connection. And if you look at the blue zones, it's amazing how significant social connection is to these regions of the world where you have this unusual long living past 100 years average age and how much of that's tied to social connection. And finally, we optimize future value with expert landscaping and enhanced resilience. And what we know when we do all this is zero is the wrong answer. And so if we go and look at a lot of tabulations I've done, basic uh, back of envelope kind of number crunching, you get some amazing numbers. And I don't want to take all the time today to run through all these numbers, but it's just stunning when you look at how much they all add up to. But well, let me give you one example. For instance, free natural comfort. Uh, we can get like 30% oh, or more of the heating and cooling every year just from the sun and wind. And that's worth about $30,000 over 30 years. So that's just an example of how we get such big numbers. 
And the other one I'll mention maybe is right size for how you live. We can say four or 500 square feet per home on an average 2,200 square foot, 2,200 square foot home, and that's about $80,000 of cost savings. So you, you kind of see where these numbers come from, but more significantly, they add up to about 100 to 200 thousand dollars of added value. That's hidden and often neglected or ignored in the sales translate. Well, in the sales process, we don't translate this value. Then, then we look at performance uh, as the next step of getting to zero for lower cost. And what we do there is we recognize protection matters. Protection from high bills, from comfort, comfort issues, from lack of convenience, from health issues, or lack of durability, from safety and water constraints. And what we do, we optimize enclosure with building science, we optimize op operation with efficient and smart components and equipment. We optimize health with a comprehensive indoor air quality strategy. We optimize water with water efficient. We optimize resilience with disaster ready. And we optimize zero by getting on the path to zero. And so all these components provide tremendous value. Again, affordability, wellness, and future. And again, I don't want to spend too much of the time we have today diving into this. These we cover in other sessions and the book. But again, when you when you assign zero value to the utility savings, that's the wrong number. For maintenance or health expenses, sick days, the numbers are really significant. Uh, take health expenses just as an example. The average out-of-pocket expenses for a household is about $8,300. If all this effort in high performance uh, indoor air plus certification homes eliminates combustion products, formaldehydes, VOCs, pests and dust mites and, and toxic mold and, uh, and uh, array of other contaminants that go in our homes, that's not worth nothing. If, if it saves you 10% of the $8,300, that's $830 a year. That's more net savings over 30 years and utility bill savings. And we don't even quantify this and explain this value in the sales process. Net $150,000 to $250,000 of value from wellness, affordability, and future value. And then when it comes to the last one, productivity, the basic why is affordability is critical. And if we're not maximizing productivity, we have increased cycle time, increased defects, increased waste, and we don't integrate self-learning. And so what we do to optimize productivity is first we optimize construction documents and we go to dig digital solutions. You want a virtual twin of every building we build. So digitization is a critical strategy. Then we want to optimize to no defects. And quality assurance gets you there. We want to move to zero waste. Lean gets you there. And we want to optimize production. It costs five to eight hundred dollars a day, from uh, significant studies about the industry, to uh, for every day extra cost to build a home. So we want to move to systems built solution that uh, tremendously reduce time as well as defects as well as waste and reduce documentation. So all these things happen with systems built. So when we look at the hidden value from be more productive, reduce bidding costs, reduce slack of time, rework, warranty, waste, uh, wellness, superior strength and quality, and then you have all this documented excellence and superior warranties. Zero again is the wrong number. And again, when I tabulate numbers and look at them, we're somewhere in the $80,000 to $100,000 value for optimizing productivity. All three, design, performance, productivity, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars of value where is this effectively translated in the sales process? So the tools we'll talk about today are effective for everything you're doing in your homes, but I'd particularly like to address getting to zero because these value components are invisible and we need to be more effective at translating them. So the next module is how do we do this? How do we translate the hidden value of zero? And so the goals basically are to do two things, recognizing that the home is the ultimate consumer product. Nothing comes close to it in terms of use, 70% of our lives, size, cost, emotion, risk, and complex transaction process. You've got to be virtually 
able to inspire customers about your product and assure them that you're the company that can deliver competency and that they can trust. These are absolute goals for everything we're doing when we translate value. So there are seven behavior change strategies that my decades of observing sales and marketing in the industry reveal are, are drastically underutilized. One is to inspire by leading with why. One is to optimize emotion with power words. One is to optimize clarity with contrast. Fourth is to optimize confidence with trust. Then optimize understanding with questions. Optimize retention with experiences. And finally, optimize relevance and personal with process. So this is what we're gonna cover uh, with the most of our time today. And then we'll wrap up with some discussion. So leading with optimizing why, uh, Simon Sinek is famous for his TED talk and research and work on this whole concept of how every business needs to lead with its why, with the why his big visual for this is the golden circle where what and how are interesting, but the target is always the why. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So effectively, this is a soul searching exercise to really figure out why you exist. This is not an easy process. Every company has to do this. But once you have it, you have basically the foundation for your marketing and messaging architecture. The how are just the processes you use to fulfill this core belief, and what are just the products and services that fulfill the core belief. The why is the foundation for getting people inspired and assured that you're a builder to work with. So uh, the numbers themselves are incredibly uh, compelling about the business case for, for leaders and why. Uh, one study which classified them under this concept, firms of endearment that lead with the why, found that over 10 years, that financial return to investors was over 1,000%, which was 3x greater than the huge, the, uh, up to this time, the, the, the pinnacle of uh, great companies was the good to great one, by James Collins, three times more return than them, and eight times more return than the S&P 500 companies. So the business case for companies that are just front and center with a compelling why are very compelling. So uh, if you're gonna optimize your why, uh, the key things to know what criteria really uh, should drive your message. And I've come up with four, almost everything I do in my presentations heavily cited uh, with references and sources. This one I, I've had to cobble together from just a lot of uh, personal evaluation of, of, of messaging itself. So the, I'll just confess, this is the, this is the SAM uh, set of criteria, but the first is simple because you have to un optimize understanding. If people don't understand what you're selling, what service you're providing, you've got nowhere to go. Then it has to be short because you have to, have to optimize recall. And I recommend a maximum seven words for your why message. Then you have to be emotional, optimize inspiration. And the last one is really significant. You have to be universal. Uh, there's, you can choose almost any words and concepts you want. And it's really critical that you don't exclude interest. You don't exclude the buyers out there from being interested in your product just because they're offended by a certain term. So you want to be as universal as possible to optimize resonance. And I'll give you an example. Uh, a lot of us like to really promote climate solutions, climate homes, climate programs, climate change. But when you do that, it's the opposite of universal. You're going to automatically offend half the universal home buyers out there that believe climate may be a hoax or not critical or there's nothing you can do about it. You're in a position of having to defend something you don't need to. Because basically what you're doing is you're building homes to optimize wellness for everybody. Wellness for the homeowners, wellness for the communities, wellness for the planet. And where I can be against climate, I cannot be against wellness. It's a universal concept. Um, I will stay away from a lot of politics that's going on right now, but it's really interesting to watch the language used by politicians who know how to use words that are universal versus words that are not. So let's jump into some examples of why. Uh, the first one is 
seven words to inspire and nurture the human spirit. This is from Starbucks. So it just speaks to so much more than just buying coffee every morning. It's about just, just getting your day into a great space from the very beginning. And um, where I often say you should stop there, they have a tag that I think is, works for me because it's almost poetic. One person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. So it's amazing how they translate the value of a great cup of coffee into something so much more. Uh, then we have Tesla, a lot of issues about possible um, uh, confidence or not confidence in the leadership of the company. But in terms of what they did to virtually disrupt the transportation industry that had been locked into the internal combustion engine in a way that no one else could is amazing. And part of it was having such a compelling focus why to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. So effective, so clear, uh, it's universal, it's, it's simple, it, it's emotional. So it, it's great when companies nail it. And maybe one of the most amazing companies, uh, uh, as an example, is Apple, because they have more money in the bank than the US Treasury, and their why is only two words, think different. It has nothing to do with technology or computers or it was just stunning that their business model was they were going to go out of the box to innovate for a better experience, everything that has to do with technology. And it almost caught following to the company starts with these two words, think different. And there's even a company with one word that is amazingly effective. Disney's why is one word magic. Everything they have to do in the business arena, whether it's theme parks, movies, uh, entertainment, cruises, everything that they're about is creating magic for families. And it's so simple, it's universal, it's emotional, it's short. You know, all these elements create incredibly effective lives. So uh, you folks that have been attending my workshops will know that I have my five word why, homes where life happens better. That's what, that's what drives me every day. I love housing. I also love planning. So I happen to love housing that's moving to zero energy. But I know that zero will also deliver a far superior living experience. So everything falls for me effectively under the umbrella, homes where life happens better. And in contrast, I'll go through uh, websites, uh, I'll go through airports, wherever I'm doing, I'll, I'll see builder messages. I'll see why missing in action and just be confounded. How can that possibly be? That this is all this builder has to say as I'm walking through Tampa Airport, number one builder for 40 years. Or no message except start your search on the website for uh, Toll Brothers. And so, again, it's just a lost opportunity not to inspire and instill confidence and do all those things at the very beginning. So in contrast, the builder came to one of my very first workshops uh, for retooling rather than housing 2.0. So we're going back to version one of my program was Newtown Builders. And I loved within months after uh, the CEO came to the workshop left, he changed the name of the company to Thrive Home Builders. Newtown means nothing. Thrive is simple. It's universal. It's emotional. It's about recognizing home can do so much more. It's amazing how easy it is. And once you have, again, your, your why, everything then just fills off it, right? Because you, you now know your core. Your home should help you thrive, ours does. Your home should help pay your energy bill, ours does. Your home should make you healthier, ours does. Your home should be built by your neighbors, ours are. It's just so elegant how when you're so have so much clarity about why you do what you do, the rest of your marketing message just falls right in place. Now, moving on to the next behavior change strategy is power words, and we have to optimize them. Words really matter almost in everything we do in life. There are an amazing number of studies and papers. And I love this quote from Rudyard Kipling. Words, of course, are the most powerful drug used by mankind. So writers of all people recognize how important words really are. And I'm gonna just suggest another 
element about words. They're a great bargain. Words are free. The power words don't cost any more than the ineffective words. So use the powerful one, ones. They cost you no more. Let me give you some uh, definition for what a power word is. Uh, power words are those that trigger a psychological or emotional response. Now let's look at examples where they virtually have been transformative when they've been applied. Uh, the American seafood eating public wanted nothing to do with Panagodium toothfish. Uh, seafood merchant from the States went down to South America, found this great uh, fish with flavor, texture, taste. I mean, it was just an amazing seafood, brought it back, and it rotted on the shelves. Uh, so this was, um, this was, I think, in the 1980s. So they cobbled together some ideas with some marketing people, and they did one simple thing. They changed the name of the fish. One word changed to Chilean sea bass. And the fish became so desirable and so sought after that the uh, fish eating public almost drove this species of fish into extinction. Thank goodness uh, it's been recovering lately, but that is just the power of one word change. And words are emotional, it's so compelling when you get them right. Another great example of the power of words is uh, ferns. It's really difficult to sell ferns. They're associated with a host, older demographic, and a certain bodily function, and you know, a whole bunch of uh, jokes that they're the butt of. So prunes are really hard to sell. And prunes were declining in consumption and sales. So the California fruit growers got together. They've got some high class, high price marketing consultants, and they came up with a huge uh, successful word change to dried plums. And to be even hipper, they went to California dried plums. And the sales of prunes went up like 20% within the first six months of the name change. And now is the third largest uh, consumed dried fruit in the marketplace. So stunning impacts when you use the right words. One more uh, example, not in the housing space, is it's really difficult to rally public opinion against the estate tax. Uh, one political party was really trying to reduce this tax. Uh, winds up, you know, when you have a big, big estate, you know, the average, um, the average citizen goes, why shouldn't you be paying taxes if you have a wealthy estate? So the political forces got together and they came up with a single word change. And then you know the death tax. And when they did this, public opinion started to flip its whole thinking about the, uh, this tax to why should you be paying all these taxes just because you die. And so the tax was repealed. The funny history about this one though was it was reinstated when I realized it had virtually no impact as it was written. It, it had so little influence on, on most people, but it, it, the change was only possible. The repeal of the tax was possible because of the word change. So moving into the housing space and the, and, and, and the more efficient housing space, I will go crazy every time I see people use the term energy audit. It's impossible to sell energy audit. The survey, instant survey I do in front of audiences is raise your hand if any of you would like an audit. And of course, not a single hand goes up. It's a term that is the polar opposite of the power word. You, you have all the words available to you to choose. And you choose a concept, a name that no one thinks any single positive thought about being audited. And the words are free. You can choose the powerful ones. So we all value checkups for our cars, for health checkups, because we know our bodies, our cars, are valuable assets. And it's so important to make sure they're running right. So this is a freebie. People value checkups, just say the energy checkup. This isn't very hard. We have to be better at translating value. Now, in, in terms of the high, uh, highly important indoor air quality feature. We try to sell ventilation systems. And there's no one out there in public uh, home buyer space uh, that's not a zealot for, for indoor air quality that's thinking ventilation. But everyone knows when a house feels stuffy, what they want is fresh air. So just, it's a freebie. We can name it a fresh air system. Now, in, in technical settings, we can still call it ventilation. But in any public-facing communication, this is so much more powerful than ventilation. 
you kind of get where I'm going. I, I'll do one more. Um, I, I work a lot with the structural insulated panel industry, and I've always been um, less than happy with this term for such a high value product. You know, structural panels have so many incredible advantages and so much added value. So I would just change the name to advanced protection construction. This is just so far advanced in terms of every part of protection from bills, from, uh, from resilience and impacts and fires and from uh, windstorms and it's so much more protection for comfort and low bills. This, this is just the ultimate uh, advanced technology and we're just calling it by a how or what it is. It's a structural insulated panel, not why. There's a reason we use these panels, and this is a start in the direction to something that's more powerful. So to wrap this up is the idea is we're moving from technical jargon, which often is the source of the names, in the, or the geeks who are developing new innovation come up with the names, to a language of value, a language that extracts all the value right up front and makes sure we're translating it. Okay, the next concept is contrast. You want to definitely optimize contrast and the reasons for clarity. In fact, clarity depends on contrast. We understand something so much better when we see it side by side with something else. When we just see something in isolation, the value is really hard to understand. I can say a home is healthier, I don't know what it means. But when I can say it has twice the health protection of uh, Energy Star Home with this indoor air plus label. Now I'm contrasting uh, the value in a way it's understood. I'm getting twice the protection. So that's the basic concept. And where you can really put this into hyperdrive is when you leverage loss aversion, it's so much more powerful than how much you save. And so it's really important to always think about how much you lose. You lose half the protection if you go with just energy star versus indoor air plus. You know, that's the power message. So let's look at, again, examples where too often we see the kind of uh, lack of leveraging or, or, or such an important behavior change strategy. Clarity, missing in action. Uh, nothing more, nothing, no better example than the NFRC National Fenestration Rating Council window label. Uh, the label goes in the window. It's not for the architect. It's not for the engineer. When the label's on the window, the only person who's going to see it probably is a home buyer when they, when they go by to see their home after or during construction. And this label is Greek to anyone who's just not completely educated at a higher level than the average homeowner. So we have like a mix of four different or five different metrics. We have terms that no one understands. And so when I see the window on the left and the window on the right, I have no idea of the real contrast and clarity of the difference between those two windows. The one on the left is an energy start dual glaze window. The one on the right is a triple glaze window. If we're in an initiative where we really want to promote, particularly in cold climates, moving to triple glaze windows, this would have no impact. In contrast, to just really explain what's going on. The one on the left is a 10-year window. Within 10 years, it will be obsolete as a choice in a cold climate. The window on the right will meet and exceed future expectations. It's a 50-year window. One of the most important features of any new home for windows, do you want a 10 or 50-year choice? Now, that creates a whole different decision-making process for willingness to pay by the homeowner. Now they have clarity about what the difference is versus this. It's stunning, just we don't use these type of uh, approaches. Now, this may be too out there for the window industry, but there's got to be something better than this. By the way, this is called the curse of knowledge. When you're so deep in the weeds that you, you only know how to explain something at such a high level that others don't understand versus bypassing the curse of knowledge and thinking like a consumer. Now, one of the groups I work with, Aerosil, is a great company. They make this uh, digital air sealing, automatic, technology-driven approach to getting homes airtight. But this is the label that comes out of the process on the left. And I think it'd be so much better, you know, it's a lot of information. I don't know what this is really saying. If I'm a homeowner or the builder, just stick it on and it's ignored. But in contrast, we can maybe leverage the fact that the results on the right tell us that we had it 
nine square inch hole when we started and we got it down to a half inch. Just visually show what we did. We got, instead of, instead of having this big hole in the wall, we got it down to a small, small, little, tiny, infinitesimal small hole in the wall. And that's really the value of what you're doing. You don't need to show the profile and have it in CFM for uh, leakage per square inch. Just show graphically the size, and now you're translating value. And when we had the Zero Energy Ready Home program, we had a real challenge. We had no marketing budget, no marketing consultants, um, and we had an 8,000 pound gorilla in the Energy Star Home program. And all the existing homes were like six out of seven homes sold. So, you know, how do we create value for Zero Energy Ready Home? So what we do is simply use contracts. We explained, for, we had five comparison uh, attributes that we showed Zero Energy Ready Home was so much better. The one I thought was most effective was health. You know, you, you have twice the protection in health for a zero, energy, a zero Energy Home in green compared to the Energy Star Home in blue and you have 15 times more health protection than if you buy an existing home. How much health protection that many experts believe should be in every new home do you want to give up? Loss aversion. So this is basically the tools we developed and the messages we gave to our, uh, our, our builder partners. And the, the important thing is, when you look at the fact that we spend 150 to 300% more for uh, organic food just to keep pesticide out of the food we eat, and we spend 300 times more for bottled water versus tap water just to keep some unknown contaminant out of our drinking water. We can even specify all the contaminants that we're providing twice or 15 times more protection uh, from toxic mold, volatile organic compounds, from aldehyde, dust mites, dust particles, carbon monoxide, pollen, pests, bugs, spiders, all this we protect from. And here's a great example of a builder who broke the mold and provide tremendous clarity. So like 98% of the builder billboards I see look like this. You know, from the price, this is an old billboard uh, image. So from the price in the high 100s be from the high four, 500s right now in a location. And you just drive right by and there's zero retention. In contrast to the Garbage Homes billboard, my power bill is $5, what's yours? Here, the contrast is implied. Everyone knows they're probably paying hundreds of dollars per month. And here's Heather Robbins paying $5. What's going on? That is something you might retain. The power of just bringing home the most inspiring message that's easy to understand is so critical when we sell invisible features like health and affordability and comfort and durability. Moving on to trust, you know, sales, so many books you read will tell you, it, it, sales is all about trust. Trust really matters. We can cite any number of books just dedicated to this one topic, that trust and building trust. And it really matters for housing because like we said before, it's the ultimate consumer product. Nothing comes close and use 70% of our lifetimes, size 2,000 square feet, nothing comes close. Cost half a million, $700,000, nothing close. A lifetime, maybe 100 years, nothing close, emotion, risk, transaction. This is, the, if there's any product that demands trust, it, it's housing. And a friend of mine, a builder, decided to get his PhD at Clemson and did some research, and it was stunning the lack of trust reality we have in housing, which I always knew. There's no way a, a home buyer can trust a builder. We only buy homes maybe three times in a lifetime. And really, since we buy eight or nine times more used homes than new homes, the amount of exposure we have to new home builders is so small that we can't have trust. We don't know how they build, what they build, what's behind the walls. We don't know the technology choices they made. We don't know so much about what we're getting ourselves into. So the finding here is worth noting that none of the 162 home buying respondents indicated they strongly agreed home building companies are dependable or trustworthy. So we have our work cut out for us, but it, it's it's something we can do easily with best practices. And the three that I recommend are independent certifications, association with leading brands, and testimonials. So we know in the car industry that, uh, that 
there's a tremendous lack of trust with car mechanics. And again, you leave your car and you hope they're really doing something and they're using, uh, putting in the parts they say they put in and, and doing quality work. So the importance of a AAA independently approved certified repair shop is incredibly important. And so that's why so many mechanics will do this. Two out of three US drivers distrust auto repair shops. And so uh, in optimizing trust, it uh, also applies to buying used cars. And so we're ignoring power words when we even use this term, used cars. And so what I love about the car industry is getting more savvy with using power words than now dealerships sell pre-owned cars. But where they're really good at leveraging trust is when they use the concept of certification. Certified pre-owned cars. Now you've got both power words and trust leverage with certification and the average premium for a three-year-old mid-sized car is almost a thousand and for a luxury car the average is about three thousand and again the prices will be going up so much this is from 2018 research i'm sure these prices are much higher so that's the power of certification and all these certifications are available to you just the hers rating is a certified independent uh, uh, measure of your efficiency Indoor Air Plus means you have 100% of the health protection recommended by health experts in the country. In Energy Star means you're in the top top 10% of the most rigorous high performance farms in the country. So uh, again, I, I don't talk about energy savings. I talk about what you're losing. I'm, risk, I'm always about loss aversion. So I, I never talk about energy savings. With Energy Star and Zero Ready, I got to bump it up to the top 1% most rigorous high performance homes built in the country. What a huge benefit to differentiate the builders in the program. And you've got to give your builders the tools to be most effective messaging why they do that label. Passive House Institute, US and Passive House Institute, the European group, they're basically some of the most rigorous energy efficient certification. It's a tougher sell, I believe, but they have a strong niche following and really want the penultimate. In, in energy savings. And then the green programs are US Green Building Council's Leap, Leap for Home and the Green Building Standards from the AHB. My problem with green is I don't know what the message means because you know it's a bunch, it's a point scheme with a lot of millions of combinations and different investments and improvements. And this one, there's no single what I get bankable uh, uh, feature for green. So I, I struggle with green, but the message is it's green. And then uh, Home Innovation uh, Laboratory has a Home Innovation Quality Certified to recognize builders who meet quality uh, uh, assurance standards and less than 1% of builders are certified to these standards. So that's a huge differentiation for the builders who join that. So all these certifications, and then uh, there are others that we can name but I just 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 give you a sample and then the other opportunity you have is you're using a whole array of products that are very powerful brands in themselves uh, computer industry for instance it's common to see Intel inside and Windows uh, uh, 10 11 12 whatever it may be so you know some of the other industries know how important it is to leverage other uh, ingredient brands that are part and parcel of their products and housing can do the same thing there's so many product categories with great brands behind them that are opportunities for associating and leveraging their brand recognition. You know, building materials, uh, comfort systems, indoor air quality products, interior products, uh, electrification products, expert advisor products. And we're happy to say that you know, we're, we carefully filter our sponsors because we think they bring great brand solutions to integrate with builders. So Panasonic's great for fans and and ventilation and styroelectrics amazing for smart home and other related uh, features in your house and Jinko solar obviously for solar so we love the opportunity you have when you pick really good companies and products to leverage that in your marketing and the last part is uh, of trust i talk about is testimonials are just way underutilized i went to a dedication uh, for cobblestone homes uh, uh, and uh, I was doing a dedication speech for opening a new development and when uh, 
when Charlie came up to me afterwards and told me that his family had just been struggling forever with health respiratory issues with the kids, right? in just months they threw away the, inhal the inhaler and the statement that, that was priceless. I had to walk him over to Melissa uh, um, Wall, who was the owner of the company, and said, this has got to be the first thing I see when I walk in the model home that's, that's right here. It's just, how can you not have that kind of compelling user testimonial as such an important part of the story that you have to tell? And I see some websites that do this, there aren't enough that are really effective. This is Cornerstone Builders. They were fabulous to work with. They couldn't have asked for anything better. And they have over here, they have a, uh, even a whole list of testimonials. And just with the length creates confidence. So this guy really satisfies your customers. And then moving on to questions. Now, questions is a huge topic of research and study uh, because everyone under knows that understanding really matters. You've got to listen and understand the buyer. You can't hope to be effective selling if you are not effectively listening. So we have lots of books and, um, and I'll give you some guidelines for questions just because you know, too often questions are, are done ineffectively and don't really get people to engage. So the first thing you want to do is ask if it's okay to ask questions. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions so I can really understand your needs for your next new home? Uh, and you have to be really clear what your goal is. What's your purpose when you start conversing with the buyer? It's to uncover urgent needs. Usually you want to find at least three urgent needs for each buyer so that you can effectively be a solution to that problem. And unless you peel that on your back, unless you dive deeper and deeper and behind every response, find the root cause reason that they care about that, you can effectively sell to it. So those follow-up questions are critical. You want, you want to get to the emotions of what buyer value most, the pain points that they're, that they're trying to overcome. And you really want to understand how they live in their home and then you will know what you have to offer to be their builder. Uh, the key thing about questions is they gotta be easy to answer, but not yes, no. You don't wanna have a one word answer. They have to be easy, but not yes, no. They have to be interesting that the customer wants to converse with you. And they have, uh, and it has to encourage them to talk about their problems, the desires, again, not yes, no. So here's some sample questions just to give you a flavor for the kind of engagement that can get the ball rolling and really get you deep into um, what buyers really care about. What do you like? What do you like least living in your existing home or apartment? What do you like most living in your existing home? Why are you shopping for a new home? What are the home builders or existing homes are you considering? You know, again, what differentiation points will you position your product? most effectively. How do you envision living in your next new, world, next new home? Do you have any concerns or special needs for any family members? Really important to get to this one. Do you have any must-have features? Again, obvious. You want to know what is a showstopper and make sure you have the answers for that. Why, when are you looking to move into your new home? Again, it's positioning the sales and uh, 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 timing. How much is your current annual utility bill? Maybe if you're building a zero energy home, it's important to know if you're spending $80 a month or $400 a month. And finally, another question would be, are any special certifications important to you? Is anyone coming through your door who's primed already interested in one of the certifications that you have? You need to know that. So there are a whole array of questions. We can, we can list many more, but you see how all these are great at starting conversations but not yes, no, and they'll get you information you need to sell effectively. Um, I love David Brooks' books, a new book I just read last month, How to Know a Person, The Art of Seeing Others Deeply and Being Deeply Seen. Uh, this applies to life in general, but it's really important in sales. And uh, uh, the 80-20 rule yeah, it should be top of mind with everyone engaging prospective buyer. You want to be listening 80% of the time and talking 20% of the time. Because unless you're gathering information about the buyer, you can't be a solution to their problem or provide 
a, uh, um, a solution to their aspirations. So this is critical to be a really great listener. This, this new book is a great example. It dives into a lot of deeper uh, elements of the, how this country is polarized right now, but still so much of what is covered here is, is relevant to engaging uh, in the sales process. Okay, next uh, thing to do is optimize experiences, and this is because emotion matters. And uh, it, it's so uh, amazing to see the power of a really good experience. And a lot of books and studies that cover the whole topic of experience selling and how it's done. And the key thing about experiences, I think that it's most effective at addressing is the forget uh, forgetting curve. People forget information 50% within an hour, 70% within 24 hours, 90% within a week. I will submit a great experience will be almost uh, ongoing for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so Look at it, at it at really optimization of experiences as your forgetting curve solution. Um, one, st one book I looked at was uh, uh, Harvard Business Review on the experience uh, economy said we're com commodities are fungible, goods tangible, and services intangible. Experiences are memorable. And that's, that's the key is um, when you have a powerful solution, lock it in their heads. And so I'll give you a great example of the power of experiences with a um, program in Bristol, England to, uh, to retrofit energy improvements to homes. And they wanted to study the power of uh, infrared imaging. So they went, uh, hundreds of homes were in the sample, and they did half with thermal imaging, a normal energy assessment, which I believe they called an energy audit. And they did half of the energy assessments with the infrared image, and the results were stunning. Five times more homes that were, uh, they had energy assessments with the infrared image, infrared image signed on to the retrofit improvement in the homes without the imaging. And 75% of the homes that had the assessment with the infrared image took action to do the energy improvement. That's a unheard of uh, uptake rate. You know, normally you get a few percent with an energy assessment, you feel you're doing great. 75% took action, and 95% of those that saw the infrared images planned to do future work. It was so emotional. It was such a stunning, uh, compelling piece of information to see the visual defects in their home and this is the most important asset I own, I've got to get this fixed eventually. <laughs> what an amazing outcome, all by having the right experience. No words you can convey would ever get those results that this one experience provided. I thought this study is so uh, game-changing, and I, I don't know why now more people don't talk about it, just the, what it did to show the value of experiences in the case of the energy assessment arena, we have virtually no scaling of energy improvement programs. And, and, and here's a solution just right for the taking with so much compelling evidence. Another example of behavior change experiences for me with infrared images was one from an uh, old sponsor of my retooling the US housing industry program was Lolo Windows. And they did this, they did a home in this brownstone row of houses in Brooklyn, New York. Can any of you guess which one had the new Zeller triple glaze windows installed? Since I'm sure you're all stumped, it's this house right, right here. It is remarkable. Look at this house experience versus that house. What I love about this picture is, thank goodness, I left the old historic entry doors with the big glass panels so we actually know the house is being heated because but for this big red glow over here, I might think this house is, was vacant. So how much easier is it to go to this neighbor and this neighbor and this neighbor and say, by the way, we just finished putting these incredible new windows in your neighbor's home. Look how well they're performing relative to your home. Would you also like to have this kind of comfort, energy savings, 
uh, just incredible protection from the outdoors that your neighbors have. It's a completely different selling experience, selling uh, process to have this experience in tow. How powerful is that? So it's amazing. So, you know, what I've done in Housing 2.0 is I've outlined 38 visual experiences sold by the five key user experiences that could be leveraged in the sales process. And one here I just have is a storage tour can be set up in homes for people always that feel the current home doesn't have enough storage. Of course, you don't know, take everyone on the storage tour, but if one of the three must-have features that your buyer tells you is, I gotta have more storage, you have the experience to leverage the must-have need of that buyer. And I'll also mention that you'll see a lot of good writing about the effect of storytelling. And storytelling itself can be a, a very effective experience with a good trained salesperson to uh, integrate in their discussion with, with the buyers. So visible experiences are easy. We go from, we go from an old tired house to a brand new house and visibly we're just blown away. The emotion, the excitement, you know, builders get this. Model homes are just emotional. And same thing inside. We'll have an old tired kitchen and we laugh and we see the new kitchen and it's emotional. We're inspired. We want this. It, it, it does everything the builder wants. This, this part the industry has figured out. So in the visible experiences. But this part's the hard part. The house to the left is zero energy ready home and the house on the right is just a standard code home. You can't see the difference between the zero energy ready or the energy star and the code home. It just doesn't show up. And so now we have to create experiences about how the invisible can be made much more visible. So the uh, National Institute for Standards and Testing NIST in uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland, has a research project where they put up a zero energy home consuming zero energy. Right? And so it's getting thousands and thousands of visitors go to see this home. Originally, people go to check it out and they promoted it quite a bit when it first was built. And they had this display of a wall construction. Um, in the high performance module we talked about, I, I ranted about how way too complex this kind of construction is to me. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, when you build something like this, at least translate its value. And so just to show it in isolation, I, as an as a average home buyer, get a fraction of the understanding as I would if I showed side by side, here's what a typical two by four frame wall looks like. And just without any knowledge about building science and, 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 and thermal power values and U values and, and moisture control, I know the wall on the right is amazing innovation above the wall on the left. And what I can do to make it even more effective is add a bunch of power word labels just to explain what's going on versus the old 150 year old wall construction on the left, this advanced new wall has health protection, chemical free paint on the finish, chemical free insulation, chemical free sheathing. And we have high bill protection because we have this incredible full thermal blanket cocoon around your home. On moisture protection, we have an advanced weather barrier and we have an advanced design for water drainage so you can have no water problems. And on maintenance protection, you have 50 year siding and complete moisture control. This is advanced technology wall system that is light years ahead of the way we've been building for 100 years. That's what's in our new home. And so, you know, there's some value translation going on here that's completely missing if you don't at least give it, yourself a chance to communicate the benefits. And I told you I was a big fan of SIPs because it eliminates a lot of those moving parts that, that complex wall had I just showed you. But again, there are thousands and thousands of sticks of lumber and pieces of lumber and little shim pieces and, and tens of thousands of nails and fasteners in this 150 year old construction that we've been doing since back in 1877 when this picture was taken compared to our advanced protection construction system. Remember what I call SIPs. And it has all this protection for delay, you don't have to worry about quality protection, dimensional accuracy, and draft protection, and moisture protection, and cost savings, total cost, and condition space, additional space with all the attic space we add, and ultra low bills. You, you just, we need to be more effective translating value. 
And I'm always amazed that more builders don't ask their buyers when they after they build their Energy Star or Zero Energy Ready Home or Passive Home, can I please have access to your utility bills? Here's a waiver coming there, and then access to get their bills. So you can do this kind of contrast. Here's uh, here's the energy bill for a home uh, in our uh, around the block, and here's the bill for our homes: three hundred forty-three dollars versus minus thirteen dollars. And that's a story to tell. So this is a big tip: if you're building high-performance homes, have a waiver to get you access to the utility bills, or at least you can ask the home buyers for their bills a year later when you do a 12-month survey. And all this comes together. Okay, the last step in behavior change we're going to talk about is optimized process, where we use all these tools for behavior change into a kind of a combined solution for being relevant and personal, and just five steps. So again, remember, we started by asking probing questions. We, we have to uncover at least three needs and aspirations so we know what we can completely use to leverage a sale. If we address the three critical must-have features or concerns, we're on our way to a sale. So the first part, we ask the questions. Then when we have those three, we do this process. And this is about 45 seconds. And I've had builder friends of mine who run sales departments say, Sam, my, my, my guys, this sounds too much like a sales talk. I say, no, it's 45 seconds. And it, the problem is they're not trained to do it, and it comes off like a sales pitch. But the way it goes is you start first by there's a feature that's a must have or meets a critical aspiration. That's going to be a feature you talk about up to three per buyer. And the way you talk about it is with power words. Remember, we're going to use all the tools we just talked about. Then the next thing you want to do is be the expert and cite the advantage generically. Why is this better overall? So start there and then you zoom in. And you go to benefit. What's personal relevant for that buyer? What's in it for me? And often the way you want to do that is by with contrast. So you optimize clarity that right? this is really relevant to that buyer. And then you have to prove this. So then you want evidence to prove that this belt benefits bankable. And the best way to do that is with emotional experiences. And then five is the mini close where you ask for the business. We you agree. This is the kind of feature that you know you want to have that is being provided. And essentially, you can do all this in 45 seconds. So let me give you two examples how that can be done. So let's start, let's say, the storage example where we identified that the home buyers out of their mind living in clutter. So here we go, 45 seconds, we identified the feature. Because we've heard many concerns like yours about inadequate storage, we now include a standard whole house storage advantage. This means every home we build comes with must-have storage features commonly missing in other homes. Now you're the expert. Say goodbye to your daily frustration with clutter in your current home. Now you're personal relevant. They've told you they're going out of their minds. You tie it right to the, to the core trigger that is why they're buying a home in the first place. Evidence. Compare our detailed list of storage features with other builders. I'll highlight many of them. If you're going to walk through the house with them, we did. I highlight many of them as walk through the house. What will be the amazing point of contrast is probably no other builder is giving them a list like this or as comprehensive as this. That's your point of contrast. Look what you're giving up. And by the way, this, this is taken right out of the housing 2.0. And if you say, I'll highlight any of these as you walk through the homes, have yourself prepared to know how to do a storage tour. Highlight the amazing storage in the closets, the laundry room has places for baskets, for hanging up clothes, for all the, uh, all the uh, cleaning supplies, all that's there. You have closets for vacuums, for mops, for all the things that usually there's no place to where to put it. You're, you have places for it. Uh, in your kitchen and your eating areas for extra tablecloths and for all the cutlery that's extra and for all the extra service amenities you have, and you have four to seven um, shelves as well. So you have yourself ready to give a storage tour. It's nothing that's unique except when you have a buyer of cares, you're able to highlight it. Mini clothes, is this the comprehensive storage you're looking for? Just get a yes on something that's really critical to them. 
That is 45 seconds. That's all it takes. Another example for health. Okay, we found out that if there are any concerns they have with family members that their kids are struggling with asthma. So you go, if you're any concerns about your family health, you should know all our homes are healthy, living, certified. There's that power word certified right up front. This means our homes are independently verified to include 100% of the health measures recommended for every new home by leading indoor air quality experts. You'll breathe easier knowing you have industry leading protection to manage your family's daily asthma struggles. This certification to EPA's rigorous indoor air quality program is protection you can trust. And if you really want to create some, you know that they're also looking at Energy Star certification, twice the protection you would get with just Energy Star. So, and finally, is this the type of assured health protection you're looking for? That's just a simple, one minute part of your sales time with a buyer and you nail the critical must have. So this is where all these tools can come together right within the sales process face to face to be personal and relevant. All this doesn't come without continuous training. Your salespeople need to be experts. Knowledge breeds enthusiasm and earns trust. They need to know the facts. They need to know experiences and how to be effortless when they use them. And they have to be able to be an expert advisor and explain the features with power words and simple language for the buyers, why they're getting a better user experience. Secondly, they have to be trained on this process of being able to less than a minute effectively translate the value that the buyer cares about. It has to be effortless. It has to just roll. And this only comes with training. And what I'm going to do right now is wrap up by saying it's if there's a call to action I'd like to end with, if you I hopefully made a dent uh, impressing you that these strategies are proven and they are behavior change solutions. So start applying them now. Inspire by leading with why. Optimize emotion with power words. Optimize clarity with contrast. Optimize confidence with trust. Optimize understanding with questions. Optimize retention of experiences. And optimize being relevant and personal with process. This is incredibly effective tools that I just love to see the high performance industry just get absolutely diligent using. And I'll wrap up with one more thing. The last webinar in this series uh, coming up on May 2nd is going to be a little bit of a departure. It's the first time in Housing 2.0. We're going to go dive into existing homes. And uh, that session is called Getting Existing Homes to Zero is Critical, How We Get There. And I'm going to spend uh, that hour talking about the infrastructure issue no one talks about, you know, the 80 million existing substandard homes that badly need upgrades. They just don't work in, uh, relative to today's expectations. And second, we'll learn how to navigate the many moisture, comfort, and health minefields with a delivery solution that scales. So that'll be a, a good time to kind of uh, bring in the kind of the um, segment of the industry we don't talk as much about with Housing 2.0, and I hope a lot of you uh, take time to join us. So Mike, once again, we've, we've finished another webinar, and I'll see, leave it to you to see if there are any questions we can answer. All right, thank you, sir. And yes, if we do have questions, uh, please submit those to the chat box or the questions box. Um, and I will get to those. In fact, I'm going to put a reminder in there now. That's all right. I got uh, a handful of questions, Sam. So we're we're ready to roll on some of these questions. Um, so the first one comes in from Bill. Um, he says the only program that I've seen that gives you a value to add to an appraisal or the underwriting process is the Energy Star program. Do any others? One, the Energy Star process doesn't do that. Um, they, they, they'll cite a study that was done that I'm not sure I believe in. Uh, I think it was done in North Carolina and they showed that homes that were sold with Energy Star certification got some insane uh, appreciation, like 30%. Uh, so it's a study that cited, uh, I don't, the only tool that's out there for appraisals that, that, that can work actually is, is a green appraisal addendum. 
uh, comes from the Appraisal Institute, and it's basically a very detailed list of features in buckets of categories like uh, equipment, uh, windows, and walls, and so forth. And so uh, the key there, though, is you have to know to ask the underwriter for a appraiser who has gone through the green home training program by the Appraisal Institute. So you have as a right the ability to ask for a green, uh, they're not certified, but they, they pass the green home appraisal training. And then that appraiser should be trained to know how to fill out the green appraisal addendum. And what they do is they, they also forced, they note those measures to cite a value next to each one. So that's, that's available to every home that has high performance improvements. And if you start as you're ready, even homes that aren't certified may have better windows and they have a solar system. So it's a green appraisal addendum that is the uh, only tool right now. It is not a perfect tool. It can be hard finding appraisers that are uh, fully adept at, at leveraging all of its uh, value, not to use a pun there, but, uh, but there it is, is. That is the prime resource for appraisals. I don't think that the Energy Star's um, cited study uh, is going to do much. Uh, appraisers can't use that to, to inform their appraisals, unless I'm missing something that Energy Star has added that I don't know about. Uh, so that, but I, I know everyone right now, when it comes to appraisals, that's, that's the resource they use. And, and my hope oh, my is that there hope. is appraiser in your respective areas that have gone through that training. I know um, I it's about 10 years for me um, when we were thinking about building a home and we went through the process and we, I knew that, I knew to ask that question that Sam just talked about and I got a blank stare from the bank. I was like, yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And none of the, none of the appraisers in the list had it. Doesn't work everywhere. Right, right. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, I'll go to a question from Zoran and then we've got other questions too. Um, uh, so he wanted to know, you, you mentioned AeroSeal earlier. Um, is it common for average uh, builders um, to get one and a half air changes per hour? No. I think the average for most energy star homes is closer to about three. And the probably the zero energy ready homes might be under that another closer pushing towards two. But uh, I think most of the codes, I think five ACH50 is meeting codes. Uh, and the and the high performance programs like Energy Star and Zero Ready are starting pushing to three, sometimes one and a half with zero ready. But I think there's still ways for builders can be a little bit, um, uh, they can trade off air leakage for something else if they need to be a little bit more leaky. But um, no, I, I still think we need, as I said, I think in uh, two webinars ago, get everyone to one and a half ACH50 uh, because the ACH50 number again is based predominantly on uh, need to uh, control thermal losses. But the 1.5 ACH50 makes sense even when thermal losses aren't that great to also mitigate humidity flow into the home, uh, pollen, dust, pests from getting in the home. It adds to resilience in the case of wildfires. You, let, you don't let smoke into the home. There's so many reasons why uh, the value of 1.5 ACH50 is so great. And it's so readily achievable if we have uh, a little more attention to the detail of air sealing or we use advanced systems like uh, aero barrier to do the, do the job. But th this is where everyone in the industry should be moving to 1.5 and ACH50. And uh, we're not there. I don't think we're getting that with Energy Star yet. Uh, Izzy had a question. You know, as far as certifications go, uh, wondering about your thoughts on Living Building Challenge. So my thought on certifications is um, same thought I have about getting technology to market. You've got to minimize friction. You've got to minimize cost. 
And what I love about the federal programs, uh, they all build on each other. Energy Star, Indoor Air Plus, um, Zero Energy Ready Home. When I say, what I mean they build on each other is if you've done one, you have a platform with a small additional amount to do the second, Indoor Air Plus. If you do Energy Star and Indoor Air Plus, you have a small incremental amount to do Zero Energy Ready. And you always use the same verification process where you come in, and have a HERS rater inspect and verify to those program guidelines. So the costs never go up much to go from one to the other to the next. And um, uh, and again, it's uh, it's a system just builds on each other, and therefore it's elegant and simple. I do passive house or I do living building challenge. It is a whole array of additional friction points and cost points. You have to first register the home. You have to have, I think, some plan reviews first, and you have to have uh, a whole different verification than the HERS rater who is certified under the Passive House or Living Building Challenge program. And then you, you're, you're doing something that's completely not structured as uh, building an Energy Star as much in, in indirect plus and zero ready as, uh, as the federal programs. Now, Passive House does require a zero energy ready home as a prerequisite. But the rest of the program, that structure is an incremental add-on to the Zero Energy Ready Home. It's a comp very complicated, holistic, new set of specifications. That means you have to almost do everything twice. So it winds up with a lot of redundancy. Uh, you need the HERS verification for the federal program prerequisite, then you have to have the passive house verifier do the rest of the verification. So my feeling not to criticize those programs. Now, often this is a source of revenue for them and how they um, believe they sustain the level of quality control they believe they need. So what I say is that there for people who value the penultimate uh, living building challenge or passive house levels, uh, but you're paying a lot more extra than you do to incrementally go from Energy Star to Air Plus to Zero Ready. And so they're good, great programs, a lot of value, but it, so much more cost and so much more process to achieve them than you do incrementally for the federal programs. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. It's just a realistic. Uh, yeah. Uh, Zoran followed up and said that one and a half ACH is actually the requirement for net zero energy homes in Canada. So. Yes, it is. But it, it's the same. It's, it, it's a requirement for zero energy ready homes in um, Minnesota or New Hampshire, you know, it's in, in this country as you get further north, it just winds up that like 75 or 80% of all the new homes built in this country are in the bottom half or the bottom one third of the country or, or the western part where you have no weather. So the ACH 50 levels that you have to build to are, are much higher than three, uh, one and a half because the climates are so much more moderate in where the most homes are built. Gotcha. Housing starts um, in Minnesota, New Hampshire, New York, a tiny fraction of Georgia, Florida, Texas, Arizona, California. You know. yeah, and it's not even close. Yeah, yeah a lot of building in the Sun Belt. Um, so uh, Zoran had another question about uh, zero energy buildings. Are they actually experiencing utility bills of zero? Uh, yes. I mean, I, 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 I have friends who do zero energy ready home that had zero utility bill and they powered both the car and the house. Um, now, there's often a surcharge you have to pay, like an ante, just to sell power back to the grid. So uh, when I say zero, the energy expense is zero. You still may have other charges by the utility company that make it so you still have a utility bill, as is only fair. And I say that because most solar systems are using the utility grid as the storage system for their power. In other words, the solar system produces power and it goes on the grid and you tell the utility, you go figure out what to do with this power and distribute it and get it somewhere where it can be used. And so if you're going to use the utility grid as your basically distribution system for your solar power, there should be a surcharge. And so when I say zero energy bill, I mean the you offset all your energy use, but there still may be some significant um, base fees you have to pay for, you, for the utility, for the hookup. 
Yeah, I think of it as, you know, it's not zero energy cost buildings, it's zero energy buildings. Like, you know, there's a little bit of a difference there because. Not zero energy utility bill, zero energy bill. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Because, I mean, our, our home here was producing more electricity than it was consuming, but I was still getting a monthly grid connection fee. So, you know, I, yeah. Um, okay, so Chris had a question. Um, and this is interesting because it goes to the comment that you make often, Sam, about words are free. With testimonials on a website or maybe ones that you use in ads, such as billboards that you show, how can we make them seem more believable and less fabricated, even if they're 100% honest reviews from happy clients, as opposed to like Google reviews that maybe appear to be a little bit more honest? <laughs> Well, you, you can do that by a filter, selecting the t testimonials that sound the most uh, believable, but that's assuming that you're collecting enough testimonials that you have the luxury of being able to filter out the less good ones and use the ones that are the most uh, believable and the most effective. That said, I will submit that if it's a true quote, um, it's hard to um, it's hard to be suspicious of it, and if it's an actual video, which a lot of builders are doing, are videotaping their home buyers' testimonials and playing those on their websites, those are really compelling. Yeah, maybe they're over the top sometimes in being exuberant about the builder in the home, but it's live. It's a home buyer with their beautiful child, and and they're in this beautiful new home, and that's it. They're happy. So. Uh, with testimonials, you know, I go, yeah, it could be a risk. And if it is a risk, collect enough of them that you can filter out the ones that may be too over the top with your recommendation. All right. We've got to use um, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it is it is challenging if they're so exuberant. But if, if they're genuine and the video kind of shows that, then. Uh, look, so, go ahead. Ahead, You're a parent, and you go from a situation where your kids are virtually uh, unable to breathe and, and uh, going for regular uh, emergency uh, room visits for asthma, and then you go to where all of a sudden they're, they're breathing, they're playing outside and playing sports. You're excited. Your life has changed. You're going to be exuberant. And I think people understand the emotion the rightful emotion, we're just finally feeling healthy again. I, I think everyone can connect. It's you know if they go if they go over the top because I have this one little storage feature, yeah, that's going to be that. So. People aren't excited about closets. <laughs> I'm built. You'd be surprised. So I included it as, a, as an example. It resonates with a lot of people. I go through homes today, and as as we're shrinkflation is not just for Snickers bar. Bars, shrinkflation is also for housing, and the housing is getting smaller and smaller. And one of the regular go to ways of being able to make the house smaller is to also shrink it, the storage in the house. And I think people are going to just, you know, really be frustrated in some of these homes. Uh, another question from Zoran Are appraisals and green mortgages truly up to speed with zero energy buildings? Uh, there's no such thing as a green mortgage that I know of, except for there might be some local banks around the country that I've seen that have a green mortgage. But let's say rank and file, by and large, you don't, you, you have um, green appraisals, but not green mortgages that I know. Um, I believe there might be, I, I know the IRA or, or these other new initiatives are, going to introduce some new fund uh, lending. Uh, I'm very upset that the um, new home buyer rebate program for $10,000 does not require the home to be at least energy star zero ready if it's a new home. Um, I, I think anytime you give a, a special entitlement gift to someone, you should expect good behavior. 
and the best behavior for our country is everyone buys more affordable homes that provide more wellness and more future value. And to let people get that $10,000 rebate and not be zero ready or energy start to me is a huge mistake in government policy. So we have a tool, we have a rebate, and we, we throw half of it away of its value. But, um, but I believe there's some programs being muddled around uh, green, more type, green mortgage types of uh, initiatives, and we'll see if they come up. But I don't know of any national program right now, so maybe someone can correct me if they're listening. Um, we have a question from Seth. He wanted to know, how do we get good data about the time savings in like on-site construction time when you use manufactured or off-site building solutions? Measure. I, I met an off-site company this week. Uh, uh, off-site company brought me down to Florida. Look at what they're doing. They're building in 30 days. Unbelievable. 30 days. Now, most, most even production builders are building uh, 100 days or more. 70 days times $500 a day is $35,000 of benefit. That very quickly eradicates almost any cost difference if there is one. Maybe there isn't one. Uh, so the way, you, the, way you, the way you figure out the difference in site built and, up and systems built is measured. And we have the days or you know, it, it just, it's an easy thing to do. And how are those savings given back to the homeowner and not kept by the general contractor? They may not be given back. The build, if I build a systems built home offsite that has better strength, durability, resilience, indoor air quality that will has great design, comes with a 20 year warranty or instead of a one year warranty, <laughs> Uh, cannot be eaten by termites or insects. This is the type of home I saw, let's say, a Monday in a plant. Yeah, maybe they can build it for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 less, but why would they charge it? It's a better home. So it may or may not show up in the price. <coughs> what will happen, I believe, is prices are so out of whack and disconnected from income, a correction will come to the industry, as most people seem to talk. So when the correction comes, the site, the systems built builders offering all that additional value can drop their prices. That's what happened with electric vehicles. It was such a better experience, they were charging crazy prices at first. So when pressure came and they had to compete more, they had the bandwidth to drop the prices and still make a profit. So that's basically the position you can put yourself into. Um, thanks, Mike, by the way, not me, another Mike. Um, I put a link in the chat for everyone to see. It's a listing of energy efficient mortgages from energy.gov, actually. So, um, yeah, that will both supposed to be the FHA energy efficient mortgage. And um, I think Fannie and Freddie are both looking at introducing energy efficient mortgages as well uh, in the near term. But those are the old energy efficient mortgages, and that applies to uh, uh, new homes, the energy improvement mortgages apply to existing homes. But again, I think only FHA is doing that right now. Okay. Um, a final call for questions, if anybody's got one um, for us here. I've uh, got another one here, though, Sam, from, <coughs> excuse me, from Zoran. Um, are purchasers, so home buyers, are they educated enough or even aware about programs such as HERS or thermal imaging as a way to see energy? A resounding no to the program recognition. So Energy Star, HERS, uh, Air Plus, Zero Ready, Passive, no, no, no. There are niche buyers which are not enough to grow a business around. Uh, who are, but the, this is why today's session is so important. You have to translate the value of certification. 
I explained, for instance, if I'm zero ready, I'm in the top 1% of the builders in the country that are able to meet the nation's most, federal government's most rigorous guidelines for high performance. Or Energy Star, I'm in the top 10%. You want to use these programs as a tool uh, to build trust because you are certified independently. And I'm in a bucket that's exclusive, 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 10%, 1%. Passive houses have a one tenth of one percent. Uh, so, uh, resounding no to programs. It's your job to follow the guidance that we talked about today to translate it. Infrared image is, as we discussed, a tool to create behavior change. If I build a house with SIPs, I can show a frame house, infrared image side by side, a SIP house, and that'll be huge translation to a lay home buyer about what it means to build with advanced construction versus 150-year-old construction. Uh, and so, uh, and that will only be the case if it's not a framed house wrapped in continuous insulation. But then when I frame a house and wrap it with continuous insulation, I'm going to suggest a SIP house may be a lower cost option. So, no, so no on programs. You, your job is you have to translate the value of those programs of certification, what it means to be in a special exclusive club, and you have to use things like infrared images to prove the value and create experiences that people will never forget. So we've got another question from Bill. He says if the if the savings don't also show up in the appraisals. Why would the builder pass it along? They may not. It, again, what has to, what will happen is competitive forces. As more and more builders start building high performance homes, I think with 45 L tax credits, um, you're going to see Energy Star go from maybe 90,000 to 140,000, 150,000 homes a year. I believe you're going to see zero energy ready go from seven or eight thousand to maybe. 40,000, 30,000 homes a year. That's a lot of homes competing for the buyers to buy them. And I think we're competitive forces. And I think, again, uh, market corrections inevitably set in. You'll see the ability they have to drop their prices uh, and pass on the savings. But they don't have to. And this is the advantage of your builder listening is this is an opportunity either for greater profit or an opportunity for you to sell at lower price and be more competitive. And he also added the comment that uh, weatherization does a great job of training its workforce, but for the most part, he's seen that the buyer and the builder think that savings come from just paying carpenters and installers. Well, weatherization programs have tremendous bureaucracy costs. Um, I, I like to see some measured energy saving effects um, from the programs and see that uh, what we're getting. And um, they're so heavily subsidized um, that I, I'm not sure how they scale once beyond the uh, lower income housing demographic they target to the mainstream users. So we'll, we'll talk next week. Uh, but weatherization is a very well intended initiative. Um, you know, I think uh, they get it some basic air sealing and some basic insulation opportunities that are good. Um, but there are so many uh, funnels of heat loss, <clears throat> heat loss and heat gain in older construction. I'd like to see a really good uh, bankable study on what the real net savings are from all the weatherization uh, improvements per home. And if someone has those, I'd love, I'd love to hear about them. Well, as Sam alluded to, we uh, we do have one more seminar coming up. It is uh, going to take place four weeks from today, uh, on Thursday, May the second, at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, uh, that's it's going to be kind of our debut. So we hope that you all attend and tell your friends to join us too. It should be a great time. Good. Time. Well, I want to thank all of you for attending today. All the wonderful questions you asked us. And thank, once again, Schneider Electric, Inco Solar, and Panasonic Healthy Indoor Living Solutions for their generous sponsorships. Until next time, I hope you enjoy the beauty and the winter of spring. 
and that your allergies don't bother you too much. <laughs> stay safe, stay healthy, and take care, everyone. So long.